All of you are here today because you've done fantastic work for Edward Hospital over the years. And I think what each of you should do is give yourself a giant round of applause for what you have done. There's one particular lady here, Donna Carlson, who's in the front row, who joined uh, Edward Hospital in 1865. <laughs> oh no, oh 1965. Oh sorry, sorry. Yeah. yeah. I was really intrigued about how well that Botox was working. But 1965, there was actually a pretty interesting year. I mean, in 1965, Naperville still voted Democratic. In 1965, St. Patrick was but a lad. Pam Davis was still in diapers. <laughs> and if you're a Cubs fan, 1965 was actually a good year as well. It, it was. It was only 57 years since you last won the World Series. <laughs> Now, Donna joined the, the Edward Hospital in the uh, medical records area, and I know you're saying 1965 medical records didn't exist then. Well, I was talking to her earlier, and she said they did. Basically, <laughs> basically it was uh, things like there are only two kind of um, categories, dead, not dead. <laughs> ask yourself what do I want my attitude to be when things go wrong you're not going to say I want to be annoyed I want to be upset when you ask yourself the question what do I want my attitude to be you're more likely to say I don't want to be angry I don't want to be annoyed about this and having answered that way you will make some effort not to be angry and not to be frustrated I'm not saying it's a panacea or a cure-all but it does work and I'll give you an example of where it helped me a couple of years ago I was driving in the western suburbs of Chicago in heavy rush hour traffic. Came to a set of traffic lights, turned left of the traffic lights, and a few seconds after turning left, I noticed in my rear view mirror a mobile discotheque. <laughs> Cop car flashing lights. So I pulled to the slower lane, he pulled to the slower lane. And I remember saying to myself, well, holy St. Patrick and St. Bridget, Bit of respect there, please. <laughs> Holy St. Patrick and St. Bridget, what could that fine officer of the law want from an upstanding citizen like me? <laughs> now, that was the gist of what I was thinking. Um, I may have said uh, just one four-letter word. Um, but for those of you whose mind is in the gutter, the word was oops. <laughs> which, as you all know, stands for, uh-oh, police, stop. Right, so I pulled into a little small parking lot at the side of the road, and as I was pulling in, I said to myself, now why does he want to speak to me? And the only reason I could figure why he might want to speak to me was when I had turned left of the traffic lights. They were slightly red, <laughs> but not by a whole lot now, mind you. <laughs> so, he is there on his computer checking me to see if in my case I'm a member of the Irish Republican Army, <clears throat> or even worse, a Cubs fan. Uh, go White Sox! <laughs> hey. I, I have to tell you, depending on who I'm speaking to, I obviously try and put in a kind of an answer to that that gets a, a reaction. But when I was speaking up in the, near the Green Bay area a couple of years ago, I made the comment that the cop was checking to see if I was a member of the Irish Republican Army, or worse, a Packers fan. Oh. I didn't think I would get out of that room alive. <laughs> So he was there checking my computer to see what I, um, my record was like. And I asked myself the question that I said you should ask when things go wrong. So I asked myself the question, what do I want my attitude to be? And I said, there's no point in being antsy and annoyed about this. He probably doesn't understand the concept of slightly red lights. <laughs> so in my side mirror, I see him walking up towards me. And this being Chicagoland area, I prayed that he had an Irish name. <laughs> I prayed that he had this vision of Ireland that the roads are still unpaved. <laughs> that milk is brought to the creamery via donkey and cart. 
And that traffic lights, if they exist at all, are, well, basically advisory. <laughs> I look up. Officer Schmidt. <laughs> who proceeded to tell me in minute detail what I had done wrong. He asked for my license and he asked for my insurance. Now, none of this is made up, I promise you. I had asked myself the question, what do I want my attitude to be? As he is looking at my license, he says to me, Sir, I like your attitude. I'm thinking, woohoo, I'm getting away with this. <laughs> then he looks at my insurance and he says, Sir, your insurance certificate is out of date. Uh, my wife normally looks after that officer. <laughs> he smiled. I think he realized he was dealing with one more administratively incompetent husband. <laughs> Ladies, you know the story, I'm sure. And he just handed back the insurance certificate to me and he said, look, um, uh, take it easy on that one. Now, I should tell you that this event happened on the 16th of March, okay? One day before St. Patrick's Day. So the rest of the conversation went as follows. We're having great good fun, and as you will see, it continued that way. So the rest of the conversation went, uh, how much will this cost me, officer? He said, I'll cite you for the uh, red light. I'll leave you go on the insurance. That'll cost you $75, sir. $75? Do you know how many pints of Guinness I can get tomorrow for $75? <laughs> the guy cracked up laughing. I think he thought I was on crystal meth. <laughs> and he said to me, sir, if I was to cite you for the red light and the lack of insurance, this, this would be significantly more expensive. You'd have to go to a traffic court. So I said, uh, thank you. I appreciate the, the break you've given me. I pull into a very small parking lot with only one access and egress. So I had to turn the car around and drive by Officer Schmidt. As I drove by Officer Schmidt, I kid you not, he waved to me with a genuine smile. That was how the conversation had gone. And I said, this is crazy. This guy's waving to me with a genuine smile and he's after fining me 75 bucks. <laughs> and I waved back to him with a genuine smile saying, this is really crazy. <laughs> he's fining me 75 bucks and I'm waving back to him. But what Officer Schmidt though would not have known was that for only $75, I had got a really memorable anecdote about the importance of asking yourself a really powerful question when things go wrong. And when things go wrong, and they will for every single person in this room at some stage, the question to ask yourself is, what do I want my attitude to be? It's a powerful question. If you get stuck in a traffic jam on the 88 this afternoon or 355 or going home and there's nothing you can do about it, ask yourself the question, what do I want my attitude to be? If you've got problems at work next week and something goes wrong, and it will, it's human nature, ask yourself the question, what do I want my attitude to be? If you've got a colleague who's struggling at work next week and you see that they're not in the best of form, if you can ask that person to remember what the Irish guy said last Friday, what do I want my attitude to be? It can make a difference. Your behavior creates your brand, believe it or not. How you behave determines what people say about you. What people say about you is what your brand actually is. But let's go back to Officer Schmidt for a second, and I want to give you an example of behavior here. After that incident with Officer Schmidt where he gave me the $75 ticket, I went home to my darling wife of so many years looking for sympathy. <laughs> Did I get it? No. See, you women are all the same. So I, this is, no, I'm sitting there at the kitchen table looking for sympathy and saying to my wife, well, do you know how many pints of Guinness I could get tomorrow for $75? <laughs> Nothing. This is after 22 years of happy marriage. Now we've been married 29. <laughs> <laughs> but after a couple of minutes, my wife comes over and she puts a piece of paper down on the kitchen table and she said, I gave you that insurance certificate about four weeks ago. I knew you wouldn't put it in the car. I looked up at her and I said, so it's your fault. <laughs> when I regained consciousness, <laughs> the frying pan, as we call it back in Ireland, was in one hand, uh, divorce papers in the other. 
but she didn't actually go through with the divorce proceedings though. But to this day though, and you men in the audience and all will be able to help me on this, I cannot convince my wife that it was her behavior that was at fault. <laughs> so if the men in the audience ever meet my darling wife, just kind of try and win my side of the argument for me. But that's obviously a goofball example about behavior though. But your behavior, as part of the gift of gab, goals, attitudes, behavior, creates your brand. There's one simple little thing that I suggest to people that will help you to create an even better brand experience and brand behavior for the people that you work with. Each of you, I think, has got a program in front of you. Before you leave today, I'd like you to write down three words on that program. And maybe on a piece of paper, roughly the size of a credit card, write the three words down. And the three words I'd like you to write down that will make a difference to the gift of gab that you bring to other people is, if you were to write down the three words that you would like people to say about you after they have dealt with you. Because they're the three words that effectively describe your brand. And if you were to write down those three words and say, those are the three words that I would like people to say about me after they've dealt with me in whatever area, in that neighborhood or in my workplace. If you were to tear out that little piece of paper and put it into your credit card wallet or into your purse. So that when you go to the supermarket tomorrow or you go to the gas station and you open your credit card and you see those three words, you can ask yourself, hey, have I been faithful to those three words today? Will the last person I was speaking to on the phone or the person that's just left my office, would they describe those, me in those three words? It's a simple little practice that can make a big difference to you. Goals, attitudes, behavior. And if you adopt and adapt goals, attitudes, behavior, it definitely will help to give you a true top of the morning experience and the patients and the customers of Edward Hospital.